Hey everyone, welcome back. And today what we're going to be doing is doing a quick upgrade to my home theater PC, which I have in the bedroom. Let me begin with the specs of the system first. It is a Dell Optiplex 790. It does have an Intel Core i3-2120 processor, which is clocked at 3.3 gigahertz. It's got two cores, four threads. In terms of RAM, we have four gigabytes of DDR3 memory. In terms of storage space, it's it's a 250 gigabyte Seagate hard drive. It's one of those slim versions. And um, yeah, I mean, overall, it it took a while to open things up. I mean, once you start, once you loaded things up on your screen and you started watching stuff, it was okay. There was the occasional stutter here and there. And at first I thought it could have just been the memory. So what I did is I went ahead and I took it out of the bedroom. I put it into my office. I added two sticks of four gigs, I'm sorry, two sticks of two gigs each to the system. So that way we have a total of eight gigabytes of, uh, of memory. But in terms of speed, it was, it was the same thing. And I thought, well, it could be the processor, but this processor is not too bad. If it's just a workstation, a, a internet browsing computer or a computer to stream Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, Hulu, all that kind of stuff, it, it should be pretty sufficient. So at that point, I'm thinking it's got to be the hard drive. And I went out searching for a drive. Now, now prices have gone down quite a bit when it comes to SSDs. And on an old system, this is pretty much like the uh, best way to boost your performance and nowadays for like 120 gigabytes or 120 gigabytes you're able to find them on on uh, Newegg, Amazon, other places for about 20 bucks and I just kept an eye out I mean I was in no rush to upgrade and finally I found a deal on this XPG SSD from a data which is 128 gigabytes for the same price that you would see the other drives for that doesn't have any DRAM inside of it so yeah let's go and get started on this whole upgrade process all right, so here we have our computer case, uh, the Optiplex 790. And for the most part, Dell workstations are pretty easy to get into. Uh, same thing with the uh, desktop computer. Well, this is the uh, Optiplex, but like a Precision, same thing. They're pretty easy to get to. Uh, Dell has a handle where you can just go and lift it and pop it open. Doesn't re really require any sort of tools to get in and mess with your system. All right, so hopefully that's in focus. Um, pretty standard layout for a small form factor desktop computer. We have our optical drive on top. Uh, uses one of those um, small drives that you see in laptops. We got our processors, uh, cooling system here. There's This is where the CPU sits. We got the fan that blows air out the back. Uh, there's a heat sink down here. And, and this, this PC is a little bit dusty, but it's not a huge deal. <laughs> um, and underneath we have the processor, the uh, i3-2120. Pretty easy to get into it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and unplug, oh, come on. I'm gonna unplug the uh, power for the uh, optical drive. Unplug the actual SATA cable for it as well. All we do is just lift this tab and pull backwards and it just comes off. Pretty simple. Then we have access to the actual uh, hard drive bay. And I'm going to try to get a bit closer in. And everything's pretty compact in this system. Um, here's a blue uh, lever, which we're going to go ahead and push towards the uh, actual motherboard. That should release the drive cage. There we go. Heard that click. And we just lift upwards and it comes off and here's our actual hard drive so the cool thing about these systems is that they're pretty easy to work with we're just going to go and unplug the SATA cable that comes out of the back of the drive that goes to the motherboard unplug the power as well that should take care of it when it comes to this type of system it's very compact there's not much room to really expand on adding more drives we only have one drive bay available for this whole entire system. And I'm thinking that I might have enough room to fit the drive, the, uh, the SSD in here. If I can, I might, I might do that because I wouldn't mind having two, two drives. This is the primary C drive, but if I could just set it as a secondary storage drive, I can just probably load up some movies or whatever 
and use it for uh, storage. It's only 250 gigabytes, so it's not too much. There's not too much space on it. It is an older drive as well, so I think it's three gigabits per second in terms of uh, uh, speed. But actually, let me go ahead and grab the the drive and take a look. All right, here we got our SSD, and hopefully it does it fit. Whoa, whoa, check this out. All right, so I think we might be in luck. My other, my only other concern is about uh, heat. I'm not sure if the heat generated from the hard drive will affect the performance of the SSD and vice versa. I can test it out, I guess, um, and see, but I think we should be okay. I mean, this whole system is very inexpensive. The drive is pretty much old. It could just be tossed out or recycled if it does go bad. It's got a lot of uh, hours of usage inside of it. SSD was fairly inexpensive um, for 20 bucks. I mean, it's not a huge loss if it does go out. But of course, we want to try to uh, prolong the life of our hardware as, as long as possible. So I think this might actually work. So I want to go ahead and see if I can just plug both together in here. And it's kind of like a perfect fit. And this is a seven millimeter uh, thickness in terms of uh, the SSD. It's not nine millimeters, so it does. It's just right. I mean, there's very, very, very little wiggle room in there. So I think we're just going to go ahead and keep it like that. So now we just got to try to figure out how to actually um, keep the drive inside without really moving. And right now the whole system, you can see this in a horizontal pos position, but in the bedroom, I have it in a vertical position right behind the television. So if I put this in like, you know, so and put it in a vertical position, it might just start moving around. It might rattle, it might uh, bump against something. It could go bad, who knows? But I want to try to fasten it down if I can. I have noticed that there are some holes here and I wonder if these are the same width as what I would see on the bottom of the SSD, which they're not. Okay, so that, that idea won't work, but if I can maybe just use one screw, I don't know if that might work. Let's take a look. Nope. I can't. Uh, this drive won't, it won't push back towards this wall here, which is what I was trying to do so that I can line up the uh, hole from the SSD with this hole right here. But because of part of the cage overlaps under here, so it just, it just won't work. I mean, the other option would be to grab maybe like a rubber band and just wrap it around the uh, SSD, fit it inside and kind of grip it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. That could maybe work actually hold on let me check and see if this might work i got some of that toolbox liner stuff that i tend to talk about every so often got a piece of it right here so we're going to go and see if maybe i could just layer layer it like this or uh kind of like sandwich it in between the two drives and see if that might work nope too thick i mean there's very 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 little room in terms of uh of the uh Two drives. Hmm. Let's see here. Or what I could do is maybe get a piece of cardboard and just shove it in this area, so that way, kind of like, kind of like wedges everything in to where it just it won't go anywhere. Maybe that maybe that might work. And there's no real mounting holes on this caddy that would allow me to mount the SSD too. Is this what is this? Oh, anyways, um, yeah, there's no real holes on the caddy so that we can go and mount the uh, SSD to, unfortunately. So we're kind of like SOL on that one. Um, also, I just noticed uh, this is a slim drive from Seagate, so the height of it isn't that tall. I guess that's why we're able to actually slip this guy in right on top of it. If it was just a standard hard drive um, that you see out there with standard thickness, I don't think we would be able to do that. So... I think, hmm, on my shelf, I do have a, uh, hold on, <clears throat> let me grab it real quick, <clears throat> I do have a nitrile glove, it's like those uh, disposable rubber gloves, and this might work, I mean, it's fairly thin, and I can just uh, wrap it up like this. Of course, I'm probably going to cut a bit of it off and then slip it through. That way it's not going to go anywhere. 
I mean, <laughs> what would be funny is uh, put it inside the glove and see if how that <laughs> how that looks. It's kind of ridiculous, but um, yeah. I mean, I guess that kind of works. It's kind of like really dumb, but hilarious. I <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna be. I'm not taking this PC with me to different places. It's just gonna sit in one location. So it's not gonna really move or anything. But just a really stupid, funny idea. Um, let's see. I mean, I could just shove a piece of cardboard in there. Let me have some cardboard here. Let me go to. Uh, here we go. Got some cardboard. I could just uh, cut a strip off, fold it once or twice, and then shove it in there. It shouldn't really go anywhere yeah i think i think we might be all right yeah so we're gonna go we're just gonna go and use the cardboard i did grab a pair of scissors um corrugated cardboard does have some ventilation i mean not ventilation but it's kind of like it's got air air pockets or air, uh, space for air to travel through uh, spread heat uh that kind of stuff Dissi dissipate heat is that is that the right way to say it so we're just gonna go ahead and try that so i'm just gonna go ahead and cut a piece uh, and then see if that works i hope it does I wonder if you fold it once, is it the right thickness to slip? Yep, it is perfect. All right. All righty. Um, I just got, okay, what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and measure and see how far this goes in. Because that's the distance that I'll be needing in terms of how much cardboard on, or how much cardboard I'll, do, I'll be needing. So I put my drive in all the way in as far as it goes to the back of the uh, cage. And I'm just going to go ahead and feed this through. I need about this much distance, so I want to leave my thumb or my finger there. And here I'm where I'm going to go ahead and fold it, like so. I'm going to go ahead and cut it, like this. I don't want to get any of the uh, cardboard fibers in there, so I'm going to cut away from it. Now we can take the drive out. We're going to go ahead and shove this piece of cardboard all the way into the back. You just use my scissors to shove it in there. And again, this is an old system. If it goes kaput, well, they had a good run. All right, so now I can fit the drive in and it should stop right there. So it doesn't go anywhere. Kind of like a uh, Ghetto, I would say. Well, not really ghetto. Hey, actually, I was able to move the uh, drive all the way to the edge almost. Let me see if that will. Okay, I'm going to, okay. I guess I, I did have enough room. All right, so uh, it does it does slide all the way towards the uh, side wall. And I can see that there's the opening right there for a screw. So I might be able to just go ahead and probably not use the uh, cardboard. Wait, yeah, uh, well, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, cardboard out. It's not needed. I hope I didn't jam it in there. Come on. Let's see. I also want to make sure that my SATA power connectors will be able to rotate 180 since I'm flipping the drive in one direction. And yeah, I don't think it's going to go anywhere because actually, like right now, as it is, fitting it all the way towards the side wall, it's not really going anywhere. So I think if I move this around, I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go and do that. Just put one screw in there. I think we should be good to go. That way, we're not going like really crappy, you know, with our our process here. Let me just go ahead and get a uh, small screw.
we're good. Yeah, I think we're good to go. So I was able to uh, put a screw in there on one on one of the hole openings or one of the screw holes for the uh, SSD. So this is not really going to go anywhere. It's kind of it's staying firmly in place. I think we're good. So we have our mechanical hard drive on the bottom. We have our SSD on top. I think we're we're good. So now what we got to do is we got to go ahead and find a secondary SATA cable for the new drive. Here we go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, connect our stuff. Where's that first one? It's the first one. So this one goes to the SSD. Like so. This one goes to the secondary drive. Like so. So data cables connected. Now let's work on connecting our power power connectors. All right. So the first one is like this. And the cables are super short since everything has to be compact into the system. Yep, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I think everything has to be very compact and uh, perfect. So we got our power connectors, uh, our cables connected for power. We got our data cables connected for data. They were golden. Let me go ahead and put this back in. And watch this cable like this. Oh, yeah. It's very. There we go. All right, so it's back down again. It's firmly in place, and I just got to go ahead and put that switch back at the bottom that locks it in to the right that way. Now this is not going to go anywhere. It's 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 firmly in place. Now we can get the optical drive, which is right over here. I mean, I'm not really using this. What I could have done is probably gone on eBay and just searched for a caddy that would fit into the uh, five and a quarter inch uh, optical drive bay for a hard drive and just do it that way. But I didn't want to spend more money. I'm very, very cheap when it comes to stuff. All right, optical drive is in place. Let's get it some data. Where are you at? Here you go. Back here, and where's that power? I, mean, I don't really use the optical drive at all, so I don't even know why I'm plugging it in. But at least everything's plugged in. All right, let's tuck our cables in. All we can do now is just see if it works. Um, I'm going to have to reinstall Windows onto the SSD. I don't want to mirror the uh, drive from one to the other since I'd rather have, at this point, it's, it's just an HTPC. There's nothing really important on it. There's nothing to back up. No necessary settings to retain. So I'm just going to go ahead and reinstall Windows onto the SSD, or install Windows onto the SSD, and ju then just format the uh, secondary drive, and uh, go from there. Yeah, let's go ahead and put our cover back on. Um, now that we're installing Windows into the system, I, I can notice a huge increase in speed. Everything is just going so much faster, and I am relieved. Uh, and just getting into the desktop environment, it was so fast. 
um, there was no need to really enter in a product key for the for Windows since it was already installed on the previous drive. I just connected to the internet. It did automatically activate through Microsoft and we're good to go. Um, I went ahead and did I did a quick, uh, well, first I did erase everything off of the now secondary drive, which is that mechanical hard drive, and we're just gonna use it as a storage drive. So we, we, we took care of that. And the next thing is I just checked to see how much time this thing has been spent running in this system and from what we can tell it's got thousands and thousands of hours on this thing so it's it's had a good run um and then i went ahead and did just a quick check for the ssd it's brand new so i can clearly see that um then we did a quick speed test using Chris, uh, crystal disk uh mark and we first checked the speed of the mechanical hard drive it's not too bad, but then we went ahead and checked the speed of the SSD and this thing flies. 120 gig 128 gigabytes SSD on an older system will definitely be a huge upgrade. You don't have to go upgrade anything else. Just have the bare minimum of four gigabytes of memory, uh, an i3 processor that's super old. It, it, this this whole, this, I'm, I am so happy. It was a worth worthy upgrade, 20 bucks to improve your speed overall. I, I, just, I just couldn't be happier. Well, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I do want to thank you for watching. Take care and have a great day.